everybody. This is your girl, Lisa Marie, with Global Fight Talk. I have Jasmine Crawford, who's going to be making her pro debut next week for Elite Fighting Championship, Saturday, December 8th in Houston, Texas. So, Jasmine, you know, I heard that you're an MMA fighter. But yeah. you're all, now you're making your pro boxing debut. Yeah. So how hard is it to juggle MMA and boxing? Um, I'm going to take my glasses off. I see a big glare on the screen. Um, it's it's difficult because they're difficult in two different ways. Um, someone asked me, it, or someone told me that it should be easier because the rounds in MMA are five minutes versus the two minutes that you have in boxing. Not true. That that's two minutes is a long time when you have nothing else to rely on but those punches. And in MMA, five minutes is a long time if you don't know what you're doing. So they're both difficult in their own respects. Right. Well, definitely um, what people don't understand if they've never done either or. Um, boxing is nonstop. Like you said, it's yeah. just punching and you don't have nothing to rely on. There's no backup. You can't take them down. You can't clinch. You can't do none of that. It's like, you just got to go. You got to throw yeah. hands and all you have. So you said you make, you made your amateur day, your, no, your MMA debut back in March. My pro now debut. Was your pro debut. Okay. And, um, how many fights did you have as an amateur MMA fighter? Four. Four. Okay. Yeah. And what about boxing? I only had two. Two, really? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was difficult to find fights for a solid year. I couldn't find a fight. And then I said, well, okay, well, I'm just going to go to MMA. This might be a sign. Um, and that's, I juggle both of them because I, I see the beauty in both of them. And even like you, you brought up the clinch. When you're in the clinch, if you don't know what's happening there, you're going to think that they're just stalling. But it's, things that's happening in the clinch mm -hmm. even when people are on top of you on the ground like it's there's things happening there's work being done it's just you have to you just have to be knowledgeable but right. in both ways it's not easy right so what made you just well well let me say this you know you in boxing you had to go pro because you went pro as an mma fighter so there was no okay let's go ahead and go pro but what yeah. made that decision for you to go pro as as an mma fighter um i was just tired of it um i just was ready to ready there was nothing yeah. else that i needed to to do and i was having such a difficult time again finding fights and i said well why am i doing this i'm not i'm not getting anywhere staying amateur I'm very good, so why not? And a lot of those girls that I could fight right now as a pro, I could beat them. So why not? And it was it was more of a just kind of put my big girl panties on and just <laughs> just just make the assumption the the decision and just do it and have faith in myself. Right, gotta love the confidence. Well, I went to Houston. I think it was like two weeks ago to go interview um, Aaron Navarro. And um, during the during half of the interview, um, you and Ashley, is that her name, Ashley? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, you girls were in the background fighting or sparring. And I remember looking and I had to say something about it. And we kind of watched for a little bit. Uh -huh. But you guys my interview so much better because <laughs> I was paying attention to the sparring that was going behind me. Yeah. And um, now Ashley, she's a very great fighter. She has a Muay Thai base. Yeah. And I remember looking at you girls and I was like, oh, I want to get in there. It just brought back so much memories or whatnot. But um, you're very tall. So what weight class are you fighting at? I'm 5'8". So I fight in MMA at 135. And I'm actually going up in weight for this fight. So in, in boxing, I won't fight that little. Um, it's just, if I had my choice, I would do like 142. One, you, that, yeah. That's an a easy weight cut for me. Like right now, I was two pounds out yesterday. Um, okay. So it's not, I'll, I'll be stronger, I'll be faster. Um, but in, in MMA, that weight is a lot. And then you have a lot of bigger people in MMA. So yeah, just just a lot of pe bigger people, and they have a lot of wrestling background, so they cut a lot more weight. And ten pounds with someone who wants to hold you down as a striker is not smart. So in boxing, I would be doing in the forties. The lowest I'll go is forty. Forty. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, um, boxing and MMA are two different. There's weight classes, which is yeah. which is weird. So featherweight and MMA could be someone you know heavier. It's just it's just it's just different. It's, um, it's, it's a different culture. You you have to think it's um, wrestling culture, because in the wrestling field, I know guys that cut twenty pounds the day before weigh in, and that is so unhealthy. I refuse to do that. I refuse yeah. to do some things like that because as a woman, it, it messes up your hormones. And there are women out there that, that can't have children anymore because you mess up your hormones. So for me, I'm being smart. And I know I want what I want after fighting. I can't fight when I'm 60. So I'm <laughs> thinking about the future as well. Unless you're Bernard Hopkins or Roy Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Those are an anomaly. It's not me. What <laughs> Yeah. But you know what? Um, so you're, you're, you're fighting, you're, you're training in Houston. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about, um, where you're training at, who are your coaches where, you know, the name of your gyms, how long you've been with them. So I started, um, when I was my last year in college, I was 220 and I walked into a gym. Yeah. <laughs> I can't see it, especially after that, that pic that you put with your abs or, or whatever. <laughs> showing. You were 220? Yeah, that is crazy. I was 220. Um, and I walked into a gym my last year, and it was more so of, I didn't have any confidence in myself. And at that time, I was on this track of, of going to law school. It was my last year in college, and I, I just wanted to have confidence in myself. Because I remember telling myself, if I can't have confidence walking into an interview with a power suit on, there's no way I'm going to win this case. So... I just walked into a gym and I said, I got a trainer. And then I so happened to see some people grappling and I was like, well, what's that? What's MMA? And I started doing the cardio classes in 2011. I moved back, graduated. And in 2012, I found CBM. And that's where I met my coach, um, Deuce. His name's Chris Powell. We call him Deuce. Uh, I met him and I just uh, immediately uh, linked up with him and Daryl Nolan. And we... Um, they just kind of took me as, as their sister and they little by little, I just started taking pieces of them and very selfish with them. Like I don't want them working <laughs> with anyone else. And when I started, well, I guess women are territorial. That's just, I'm awesome. very territorial with them. Like I, I'm selfish with them. And I'm not, I'm not ashamed to say that, but, um, when I decided to make the transition to MMA too, I needed a, um, I, I did a couple fights with, with that gym and CDM, but I needed more. I needed groundwork. So that's when I went to, to Four Ounce. I'm no longer with them. I'm going to another gym. Uh, I met actually Jeremy, Jeremy Mahon at Four Ounce, and he has his own gym called War, W4R. And okay. when I do my MMA, that, he's like the mastermind. So I have my, um, my MMA gym with Jeremy, so he puts everything together. And then the rest of my time is at CDM with, uh, with Deuce and Daryl Nolan. So I, I split my time in MMA. It's, it's a lot more that you have to do, um, a lot more exhausting work, uh, because wrestling is not easy. That's the, the worst part of MMA to me. I hate wrestling. Yeah. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's where I'm You got to do it. You got to yeah. do it. So... Are, are you nervous for your pro debut, especially of in course. your backyard? Of so course. how do you, how, 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 how do you control, how do you control your nerves? Um, I mean, you're, you're, you're one week away and yeah. usually around this time for me personally, um, a week out, I'm sitting here thinking, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? Hopefully something happens that prevents me from fighting. Like I have those thoughts, but I think that's just, it's a mental game and people don't realize how strong you have to be in order to fight. It's more mentally than anything. Yeah. But once I get there, it's over and done with. Like I have so many <laughs> different conversations in my head, but once yeah. I get to the venue, I'm good. So what I, do you do? I'm never, I'm very honest with how I feel. I'm extremely, extremely emotional. And that's, that's a plus and that's a minus. Yeah. But I'm very honest with myself and knowing that I'm never not afraid. Um, but I remember watching a, an interview with, are you familiar with George St. Pierre? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I, I love him. He could get it. 
But I mean, and I heard he likes black women too. So boo. Comes down here to Texas. <laughs> First, I didn't know what you meant, but now I do. <laughs> That's funny. Right. <laughs> I read, I, I saw an interview when I first started, it was before my first amateur fight, um, and he was saying that he's never not afraid, but he's more afraid of someone who is afraid, but still does it, versus someone who's pretending like they're not afraid. I'm afraid. I'm scared. Anything can happen. I may not be the person who wins that night, but at the end of the day, it's just me in there, and I've done absolutely everything that I can to make it, to make my best self come out. And what gives me confidence is that I I come at peace with, with losing. I remember telling Ashley that too. And it's not that I'm waving a white flag and I'm, I'm okay with losing, but I've done everything that I can do. I've ran all the miles. I'm up at 4 a.m. some days before I go to work to go run. I've busted my butt in the gym, given up time with my family. There's nothing more that I can do. So if I do right. lose, then that woman was the best woman that night. But I've given all that I can. Right, right. So in other words, I mean, that's probably one of the worst feelings to lose is that you didn't do everything. Right. That was one of the worst feelings. But to know that you have, of course, that just yeah. that's just her that person. gives me confidence. And I, there's, there's never not been a camp that I didn't give all that I have. I, I've, yeah. I've literally been sitting outside of the ring or outside of the cage or in my car, just crying from exhaustion recently where I'm just so tired and just mentally fatigued where I have no words and I don't know what to say. And I'm, I'm just, I just need comfort. I remember I had a meltdown Sunday <laughs> and it was a friend, my friend, Amber, Amber Davidson. Um, she helped calm me down too. And my best friend, George Harris, and one of my really good friends is Shira Rito. Like, they, they've been my backbone uh, for this. And do I, I can't ask for a better, better coach. He's just a great person. And um, yeah. my friend, uh, Robert Redman, he actually fights the weekend after me. And so he understands. It's, it's, it's cool to have friends that not only understand, but are there for you, too. So the, the backbone that I have and the support system that I have is – I, I can't replace it, um, but I'm never not afraid. I come at peace with losing because I've given all that I have and there's nothing left to give. Well, people don't realize too, like a week out of, um, you know, the fight and you're cutting weight as well. There's so much emotions going on. Yeah. When, I, when you're hungry and you're thirsty, <laughs> hangry. And you're emotional, <laughs> you're, you're hangry. <laughs> there's so much emotions going on at that time. Um, so yeah, the, it, you, people, you know, don't understand the breakdown when yeah. that does happen. And I, I always thought that I'm not asking for attention. It's just, I, there's a certain thing that, that I need personally comfort and I need that the day of the weigh in. I need that the day of the fight, like Deuce, uh, we, we were in Louisiana and I needed him and he knows, he knows what I need from him. Um, him and Daryl, like they don't let me out of their sight, and it's not yeah. like they're babysitting, but they just they just know that even if them just sitting there, just talking to me, and even you don't have to talk to me. I I need you there, and I need I'm turning off my notifications. You take my phone. I just need you there. I need your comfort. I need I need you. And, and, and you know, and the and the corner is just as as, as important as the fight. You got to be. You got to trust your corner because yeah. they're the ones you the instructions so next friday december 8th houston texas let everyone know how they can get tickets how they can um, get a hold of you if they need to where's the venue what time give us the 411 on everything it's saturday next saturday so i weigh in on friday um it's gonna be at greenspoint mall y'all can hit me up Anytime on social media, and I will find you and get you tickets. Tickets are thirty-five dollars. It'll be at Greenpoint Mall. I believe I'm the co-main event or the co-co-main event. We'll see things happen at the weigh-in, so right. we'll, see. we'll see. Um, but you can hit me up there, or you can just buy tickets at the venue that night and just tell me that for me. There you go. You know, people got to realize that you know the the fighters need people to come and they need to say your name so yeah. the promoters know that you're a ticket seller. Yeah. Of course. 
Um, so if people wanted to follow you, follow your career, let them know where they can find you on social media. I'm very basic. It's just Jasmine underscore Crawford 89 on um, Instagram, just Jasmine Crawford on Facebook as well. And my Snapchat is Jazzy C O three. I think that's it. That should be it. <laughs> if not, I I just have it's so accessible. I mean, if I was like asking somebody for your um for the phone number, you just don't know it anymore. Right, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Before we wrap this interview up, do you have any shout outs you want to give to your sponsors, friends, teammates, family? You have the floor. Yes, I do. As I said, my best friend, George, who is actually coming down. He lives in Brooklyn and he's coming down just for me to see me. Yes. Um, we've been friends for over, <laughs> we've been friends for over 15 years and yeah. I, I, I can't replace him. Um, my two really, really good friends, Kristen Rodriguez and Ashira Rito, those girls, especially this year, like I had a lot of personal things that happened after my pro debut in March and just a series of unfortunate events, basically. And had it not been for them, I, I don't, I don't know what I would have done. And, um, my friend Mark, I have some friends from, from college too, that are coming down, Aaron and Lance, they're coming down from Dallas actually. Um, and who else, my sponsors. So Jose, it just so happens that all my sponsors are women. I have no clue how that happened. I see, how are the women? <laughs> yeah. So Hosanna Rule with her I Rule design, she has been my photographer and she'll be there as well taking photos. Um, Heather Liao, she um, she has her own um, food company where she does my meal prep and everything. And she's a, a chef. And when I tell you those foods, are, it's very good. She tailors it to what you need. Um, she's been doing that for me, and it's excellent. Um, and who else? My, my cousin, Kristen Ashira, she has her own apparel line. Both of those are doing my, my apparel. Um, Missy, she's done my... Um, my mouthpiece and it all of these women these are their own businesses so they're going out on a limb following their dreams and i'm doing it myself as well so they have and then, yeah <laughs> yeah and all my family my friends my um my cousins we have an amazing group chat where if i let my phone go away for a couple hours i have no clue what's happening in life what with, with that group chat all my cousins um tam chrissy chanel bm and my sister my sister has yet to miss a fight and um i don't know what i would do without my sister so if i've missed anyone oh and amber amber davidson like i said emotionally she has totally been there for me um last but not least i mentioned him robert um good luck on your fight next week i'll talk to you before then but he knows what he's done thus far. Well, there you go. Support is at its best. Um, Jasmine, good luck next week. Thank December you. 8th, you're going to be making your pro debut. Again, yes. this is Lisa Marie with Global Fight Talk. Make sure you stay tuned and follow us on all of our social media sites. You got us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, at Global Fight Talk, and we are Fight News. See you then. Thank you.